Yeah, during the break, I tried to use my phone and got a, all circuits are busy, please try again. And you'll see how that fits into this presentation. Uh, I, I'm, it's really uh, two parts. One of them is to talk about a case study for a MARSEC compliance project at one of our mills, our paper mills in Stevenson, Alabama. And the second is really to give you kind of a primer on wireless performance uh, challenges and management. Uh, just briefly about Rock 10, uh, they just bought a company that was twice as big as them called Smurf at Stone Container Corporation, and it made Rock 10 uh, one of North America's leading producers of corrugated and consumer packaging and recycle solutions with uh, net, net sales of about $10 billion a year. The Rock 10 employs uh, about 26,000 employees and has 245 facilities uh, around, around the world. Uh, Rock 10 is a low-cost uh, position in the marketplace and it's performance-based, data-driven culture that helps us continuously reduce cost and increase customer satisfaction. So that's the Rock 10 commercial. They're based out of Norcross, Georgia. The problem we faced at the Stevenson Mill is we had to have a uh, MARSEC or Maritime Security uh, Compliance Project. And so we had to submit a facilities uh, security plan for approval and then execution. We did that about five years ago. And at the time, we had really two, two avenues we could take. Uh, one of them was to issue what we call TWIC cards, which are transportation worker identification cards to a bunch of folks. Uh, we had about 300 truckloads a day of, of product and fiber coming in and out of the mill. That represented about 950 drivers per year. The mill has 400 employees, and a TWIC card cost $132, not counting the time it takes to go and get it and so forth. So the, the cost to comply in that fashion was less than $180,000, not too bad. But if somebody couldn't get twic you have to take drug test, and we don't have control of all these drivers and such, and we can't get fiber or we can't get stuff hauled away, then we faced millions of dollars of interruption cost. And so TWIC wasn't a real good alternative for us. The uh, captain of the port allowed a variance and approved uh, video security. And so that's the route we took was we're going to put in a video security system, some fencing, and, and very few TWIC cards just to keep personnel. So then we had the choice of which one. And five years ago, uh, we, we chose, because there wasn't any wireless, uh, really, that would do the job. We chose a proprietary hardwired solution, built our budgets around it, and went forward. When it came time to do the project, was just, it was about a couple years ago, technology had changed, and uh, we were having some problems in other mills related to wireless systems management, and all of a sudden, it's the, it kind of hit you in the ceiling of what we needed to do. We needed to go open, we needed to go wireless, and we need to put that infrastructure to other uses besides just security. So we started looking at what type of systems did we have at the Stevenson Mill, and this is typical of other mills at the time a couple of years ago. And one of them is wireless business LAN, and that was managed by our business IT department. Then if you go out into the process areas of the mill, we had wireless vibration for paper machines and such. We had clamp truck operator stations that would tell the truck where to get the roll and where to put it, what train car and so forth. We had wireless remote data links, and we had truck tracking at the wood scales. Every one of those, and all those four applications were independent, not integrated, and they were managed by our, our uh, manufacturing IT group. So we had two different IT groups managing, and several. About the time we were revisiting the Stevenson job, to execute, we were having uh, the equivalent of all circuits are busy, please try again at our mills between these existing applications. And, and we said, this isn't good because wireless is coming like a freight train and we're going to be have to manage this. So the question about how to monitor, manage, and secure wireless systems and the performance, uh, we needed to understand more about it. And what we wanted was to use that same infrastructure not only for wireless security cameras, but for process cameras, for location-aware safety systems, for condition monitoring, 
and for uh, mobile operator and operator driven reliability which is the maintenance rounds and so forth so we wanted to do a lot with this infrastructure and we're going to start with security so wireless so what's to manage it's like herding cats especially if in our, our previous methodology basically the uh, wireless spectrum has been allocated by the FCC in the past and these color codes all mean something but there is a segment of unlicensed uh, ISM radio bands and the reserved internet they're reserved internationally for the use of radio frequency energy for industrial scientific and medical that's what ISM stands for purposes and it's other than communications that's what they're originally reserved for the examples of the intended applications of these bands were for uh, radio frequency process heating, uh, microwave ovens, and medical uh, heat treatment machines. The powerful emissions of these devices can create electromagnetic interference, which would interfere with communications. In general, communications equipment operating in these bands must tolerate a high degree of interference generated from this equipment. And despite the intent of the original allocation, in recent years, this is the fastest growing uses of these bands have been for short range, low power communication systems such as phones and Bluetooth and devices and so, so forth that we all have in our pocket. If we were to say, please empty all your wireless devices on the table, you'd end up with a little pile of stuff that you carry around with you. So we, we are using these bands for not the original intended application. So the type of application categories that we wanted to use this infrastructure for are roughly efficiency, safety, and security. And I call these the horses because whenever you put in a, a, uh, an infrastructure system, whoever does the first project is the horse that has to carry in the, the big cost, you know, put in the servers and so forth. So at Stevenson, the horse was the, was the MARSEC project, the security system project. Now, each of those application categories uses different bandwidths, and uh, over time, there have been standards developed by the IEEE, ISA, and other organizations to manage communications within those different bandwidth areas. And they've been given names like 802.11. whatever, 802.11.15, and so forth. And they've been grouped as far as Wi-Fi, WiMAX, and given other names so we can refer to, to that space. And what's happened is vendors have started to come up and occupy those market opportunities. And uh, so you have application vendors, which are typically the condition monitoring folks like the Emersons and the Honeywells and the Yokogawa selling their instrumentation and such. You'll have the uh, process, or excuse me, the access point vendors which are types of devices you might have in your home, like a Linksys or a 3Com or a 2Y or you know, that whole realm there that you can buy from Home Depot or, or Staples. And then there's the network vendors, which are the larger companies such as Motorola, Cisco, and so forth. And so what you had is lots of vendors trying to get into this market. And again, if you follow that path, you're gonna end up with a smorgasbord of cats to herd. So the performance challenges are that uh, as the usage of the 802.11 wireless networks or wireless local area networks grow, network performance is becoming a significant concern. And, and we witnessed that in one of our mills when we had conflicts and it was like chasing a ghost to figure out what, what was the problem and th then we realized it. In sharp contrast to wired networks where if you need more performance you add more wires, wireless networks you can't achieve performance increases by adding more access points. So to increase the uh, capacity of the APs or access points, they must be assigned appropriate channels and the clients must make intelligent decisions about which APs to associate with. And so if we look at uh, what we mean by channels, in the two major bands that are used, which is the uh, 2.4 gig and the 5.8 gig, that space is divided into overlapping and non-overlapping channels, and those channels have sub-channels, so it's, there's a big choice of w what uh, bandwidths we can use to commu communicate. And so in order to manage the performance, 
we have to look at the entire facility's usage and traffic and then dynamically change the channel assignments of our access points when we see a certain channel getting loaded up. So that's why you can't go and do a, a, a point application here, a point application here, and a point application here that don't talk to one another. You have to look at the entire traffic and be able to dynamically change channels as you see performance issues degrade. Also, we need, we would prefer to manage this with one tool set. We don't need half a dozen software packages to keep up with different aspects of it. And so we wanted to make sure that as we went through our due diligence, we looked for something that was standards based. It accepted industry pro protocols that uh, we had to deal with. Uh, most of the environments that we work in are, are pretty rugged, so it had to have certain physical aspects of survivability out in the field. And it had to be vendor neutral because our mills use all different vendors. We're not standardized on any one. Also, the whole aspect of security. Uh, not only do we need security for our mills and our wireless network, but, but because we're doing condition monitoring, communication, all these other uh, applications, we need, we need them all to be secure. And so we had to look at threat-based rogue management, attack threat detection, vulnerability scans, pervasive protection, and forensic analysis for, uh, as far as a security package that we could uh, take advantage of in this investment. And so we had a vision of what we need is an air traffic control system for all the wireless traffic in our mills so that we don't have traffic running into each other. And the, uh, again, the, the vision is a managed industrial wireless application network. So that's what we want. We want to put a big digital umbrella with a single management tool over the entire facility and we want to use it for multiple applications including security. So now let's talk about the, uh, wh where does this fit within the support architecture because support of something like this is also important. If we look at the Purdue reference model for computer integrated manufacturing, typically there's, there's a couple IT groups in, in our business. We have one which is the uh, business IT that supports this upper level of business planning and logistics. And then we have the manufacturing IT group which supports all of the other levels important for manufacturing, which is our computerized maintenance management systems, our, our role tracking and product tracking systems, things like that. So where, do, where does this third network fit? Because we're doing a bit of business type IT and a, bit, a lot of process or manufacturing type IT, so we actually create a third network that interfaces with both of the other existing IT support structures. So getting back to the problem we faced, that was kind of a brief primer in managing a wireless network performance. We had to have a pretty pressing compliance issue because we had dilly-dallied and we were about to run out of time. We wanted to leverage whatever we spent for the MARSEC security to, to create an infrastructure for other applications going forward that weren't necessarily security related. We wanted to put out a, or deploy a managed wireless digital application infrastructure, or an umbrella, whatever you want to call it, uh, in, an, in our industrial environment with lots of steel and concrete and motors and, and noise. We also wanted to not be boxed in and be open so that as we progressed, we could buy best of breed solutions in a vendor agnostic fashion. So we wanted to still have that choice going forward. And we wanted to manage all this with a declining staff of uh, IT support. So we chose uh, uh, a vendor, an OEM called Aprion out of California. And they have what we, we call it the ION system, or they call it the ION system overview. And basically, it's a single managed wireless infrastructure tool set that provides uh, video, whether it's for security or for process condition monitoring, uh, location aware safety system so we can triangulate on RFID tag, active RFID tags that are attached to people or equipment in the mill, uh, communications, uh, 
And one of the communications visions we have is mobile operators. So the, like the AT&T guy was showing, he has a tablet and he can walk around by the machines and start and stop motors and such. Uh, system health monitoring. With all this IT equipment, we need to have a single dashboard of, of uh, system health for troubleshooting and monitoring. And also, uh, again, mobility solutions. Uh, this is a picture of the uh, dashboard. And this, sh uh, we, we can create different dashboards, but this gives you a snapshot of the health of switches, routers, access points, all that stuff in the facility, and, and it's all different vendors. You know, typically on the business IT side, uh, they'll supply tools, but it, it only looks out to the switch, and it doesn't go beyond. Uh, with this tool set, we can go to the end of the chain, all the way to the end, end device to look at, at health of devices. Uh, the, the application, the horse that used to pull this, this uh, system in was the ION video. And uh, on your right is a kind of a bird's eye view of the Stevenson mill, and all the dots represent access points and switches and monitored items. And the features we have were streaming video, uh, video archive, uh, camera controls. Uh, we can use preset auto rotation, intelligent video, uh, motion detection, and so forth. Face detection, we don't use face detection yet. And camera tamper detection. So if somebody goes and beats on a camera, we, we know about it. Uh, all of the, the system, uh, we can create different dashboards for different people who are viewing it. So if it's a security application, we'll have pictures of uh, security access points. If it's a process application, we'll be looking at process equipment, tank levels, whatnot. Uh, another example of a, of a dashboard. Here's an example of zooming into one camera, and you can do your pan tilt zoom uh, to look at the area. <coughs> And one of the best features, I had the privilege of having to go through hours of recorded video to find out what trucks didn't go over scales while we were decommissioning a mill. And one of the great features of the new systems is uh, object detection. So you can put a frame in the field of view, and if something passes through that frame, it creates an event. So when I'm looking for events, I can zoom right to it and look at the time slice on either side. I don't have to look at hours worth of video to find when that truck passed the scale, for instance. Uh, really powerful feature. Uh, the next application that we're, we're gonna be rolling out at the Stevenson Mill is operator-driven reliability or operator basic care. And this is where the operators, as they go around their routes, taking uh, vibrations, temperatures, observations, and so forth, will be able to enter it into their machine. It's wirelessly connected. It'll compare against database and immediately notify them if something is, is out of spec so that they can take action while they're there at the equipment. Uh, as far as a case study summary for the Stevenson Mill, Again, the, the problem was a, a MARSET compliance issue, and we wanted to other, add other applications in the near future. We had budget constraints because we had set the budget five years prior, and uh, we needed to immediately avoid compliance fines, so we had to do it in pretty much of a hurry because we had wait, waited to the last minute. The APRION came out, did a, uh, we call it a site survey, and so Knowing all of the future applications we want, they did the uh, readings and created a, a plan or a site map of where we would put all the APs eventually. But for this application, we only needed a donut for the, for the cameras. But as we progress, we know where we're going to add uh, APs going forward to get the coverage. Uh, we had 22 wired and wireless uh, video cameras. Uh, we had the, the uh, video server, and we had uh, created the Wi-Fi WiMAX umbrella over the entire facility. We had a managed wireless infrastructure, and we could see all the, the legacy devices that we had previously managed on point by point. Now we manage it with this one tool. And uh, we also got the managed services part of it. So the result 
is uh, increased safety and security of the plant. We are MARSEC compliant, so we, we passed our facility plan, which was the goal. Uh, we economically addressed the security compliance. We improved uh, process monitoring. Uh, some of the cameras are used for process monitoring. Most of them are for security. Uh, we did have a cost savings because originally when we set the budget, we were wiring all the cameras, and now a lot of the cameras were wireless, so that's, that's where the money came from to pay for the rest of the managed infrastructure. And uh, we also got the 24-7 uh, the service to monitor that third network. So now we have three IT groups helping us manage our IT. We've got our business IT, our, our manufacturing IT group, and our third-party off-site uh, re remotely managed IT for the wireless network. We don't have problems anymore with, sorry, no circuits available, please try again. So we're, we're very happy with it. Thank you.